you need to watch this video if you plan on taking the CCNP in NARC exam. This exam is a beast. <laughs> Yes, this exam is a beast. It is incredibly hard. A few months ago, I took this exam and I earned the CCNP for Enterprise. As you can see, I took the Encore, which you have to take for any CCNP specialist exam. And then I took the NRC exam very very difficult and there's a couple gotchas that i want to mention today and more than anything one of them is in incredibly incredibly important that you know about because i was not aware of this one thing that could have cost me this exam but first let me let's talk a little bit about what the ccnp enterprise exam consists of if we go to this website here, we will see the CCNP Enterprise Certification and Training. And you see that we have to take the Encore exam, but that's not the one we're going to talk about. That one's difficult as well, but the NRC is just another story. It is so, so hard. And you only get a sick 90 minutes, as you can see here. And in those 90 minutes, the exam topics that you have to master are these. And these are the exam topics that you have to master. It's broken down by the different um, categories. So the most important one is the layer three technologies. It, click on that drop down you could see the amount of stuff that you just need to know eigrp bi-directional forwarding and detection bfd so many different things and you need to know ipv4 ipv6 eigrp you need to know classic and name mode so it's not just the old-fashioned one but the name mode as well you need to know how to configure these in IPv4 and IPv6. Actually, it's not so much configuring, it's troubleshooting, which is very difficult if all you're getting are screenshots and you're not getting the customary things that you're used to. There's also troubleshooting BGP. So everything is about troubleshooting, troubleshooting and at a very advanced level. It's not your typical CCNA troubleshooting or configuring. It is very, very difficult. You also have to troubleshoot or understand VPN technologies. You describe them. Here, you're not troubleshooting. Rather, you're just describing the questions are catered towards that. Not necessarily troubleshooting anything, but infrastructure security. You have to know this in and out completely in and out every single one of these topics you need to know infrastructure services troubleshoot SNMP troubleshooting network problems troubleshooting IPv4 NetFlow version 5 version 9 flexible NetFlow and also Cisco DNA Center there is so much to know, so much to troubleshoot. 
don't think that something will not be on the exam because it will be. You have to know it inside and out. Now let's talk about the one thing that almost cost me my exam. This was just something I was not prepared for and it's my fault. But I want to help you so that you don't go through the same problem. Cisco tells you what they're going to do. I just did not see this website. I had not clicked on this link. So I didn't do my due diligence in preparation for the exam. So we have to understand that it's not just about learning the technology. It's not about memorizing a bunch of facts. You also, in addition to doing all that, you have to know what the test will entail. What type of questions? What is the format? I just did not look here when I took the exam. And it's clearly here under study resources. You have to go to Cisco certification exam tutorials. I did not do that. They even put a, a video here and I want to show you the part that I am referring to. So if I play this video. Um, for both the associate and professional levels. To begin, click the next button on your exam module. You will be presented right here. Lab features. Many new features have been included for the new lab items. Please be patient while the lab loads as it may take a few moments. You are now able to arrange the screen in any way that you find helpful. On the left, you will find that you are able to select the guidelines, topology, and task tabs. The guidelines tab will provide you with detailed instructions on how to navigate through the and this is exactly what stumped me. I did not know that it would be a hands-on test, or at least partially a hands-on test. When I arrived at this, this was probably my second question of the exam. Because it was the second question of the exam, if you continue to watch this video tutorial that Cisco puts out there, you under the task menu, you will see that you have several tasks there. I can't remember if I had four, five, or six different tasks. But the idea is that I thought that those five, six tasks equaled a question each. So the exam is about 60 something questions. I can't remember right now. I thought this would be six of the questions under this one task. Nope. All that work was worth one question. So when I went and I saw that I had 60 questions or 65 questions, this was the second one. When I went to the next question, I still had 63 or so. I took about 12 to 15 minutes under this one task. You only have 90 minutes. I wasted so much time because I did not know how to first it took me a while to understand what I was supposed to do. And when I say what I'm supposed to do, I not I mean the technical aspect of it, simply how you saw in the video tutorial, how to move the screen around, readjust your uh, council sessions, how to move from one device to the other, looking at the topology, looking at the task. All that was 12 to 15 minutes wasted time. I believe I completed the task as stated. It was just so much. It was ridiculous. When I got to the end, that all, out of all that waste of time, when I, when I was towards the end of the exam, I had over 10 questions. I believe I had about three minutes to answer 10 questions. 
I had to just run through them. This is the first exam that I did not finish all the questions, still passed. So if you're preparing for this exam, keep this in mind. You might get a scenario like this where there is a hands-on uh, setting. It's very important that you understand that or else it's going to be very hard for you to pass the exam. So like I always say, hands-on practice is the most important thing. Keep practicing, keep labbing, and you will be able to pass. But don't forget, keep looking at these uh, lab tutorials or exam tutorials because things could change at any moment. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, like, subscribe. I hope this helps you out in your journey to get your CCNP.